Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Marvel released a first look at the Thunderbolts movie and some of the plot and how it's connected to the other Marvel movies, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. There was a bunch more footage and announcements at D23 about all the Marvel movies, the upcoming Marvel series. I will do videos about everything. But this is their full Thunderbolts reveal video. It's not everybody that's in the movie, it's just the ones that they revealed recently. So if you feel like some people are missing, remember, this isn't meant to be everyone who's in the movie. We've got the return of David Harbour as the Red Guardian. From Ant-Man and the Wasp, Hannah John Common as Ghost. Wyatt Russell is back as John Walker, a.k.a. U.S. Agent. Not here with us today, but Olga Kirilenko is back as Taskmaster. And there's somebody else who couldn't be here with us today, but she wanted to say a quick hello. Hi, D23. It is Florence Pugh here. I am so gutted that I'm not there in person to say hi. But I am unbelievably excited to be joining this cast. So please, from me, can you share a lot of love to my castmates? I am uh, extremely excited to announce, also joining the Thunderbolts, Sebastian Stan. Well, listen, you know, um, these are my kinds of people, you know. <laughs> they look like a good troubled bunch, and maybe I know a thing or two about that, and I'm just really glad to be back, and I guess, join a team of some sort. Well, I, I think it, lets, it tells you all you need to know about the Thunderbolts when, when beloved Winter Soldier is the most stable among them. <laughs> Love them making the joke about how Winter Soldier is the most mentally stable amongst all of them. Like they're really playing up the crazy energy of the team. Like they're all just a little bit demented, just a little bit twisted, and that's gonna make it so much more fun. I made macaroni if you want some. I know there's lots of questions about where Baron Zemo is, where's Abomination, what's going on with Red Hulk because of what happened with William Hurt passing away. I'll explain them in a second because a lot of what's happening in the movie connects with what they're setting up on She-Hulk and what's happening during the Captain America 4 movie because it's like the next movie right after Captain America 4. Of course they're going to be connected. A lot of what they announced for the Captain America 4 movie confirms our She-Hulk theories about what they're using the series to set up with the Hulk characters in the MCU. But the starting roster of the team, at least the ones that they announced, like I said, are Winter Soldier, Yelena Belova as like the new version of Black Widow in the MCU, Red Guardian is back, John Walker, US Agent, the Ghost from Ant-Man and the Wasp, Taskmaster, and Val is the person on the far left. She just got a little bit of a costume change and a glow up because this is meant to be a shiny new promo for the movie. So like everybody has like a small costume change. They did explain that Yelena Belova is supposed to be the team leader, but obviously Winter Soldier being the most stable amongst them is probably going to be like the other person that they look to to ground the team in reality. The way Val is setting the team up, they're using them a little bit more like the Dark Avengers, like a little bit more above board. So there are some things that they probably can't get away with. Like during Falcon and Winter Soldier, when she was pitching the team, like obviously all of her scenes during that were setting up her putting together this team. She explained she had the full backing of the US government. So like they are held somewhat accountable, but the whole idea is that they use them for really shady things that Captain America, like the Anthony Mackie Falcon version of Captain America, either won't be willing to do or they can't use them for because of conflicts of interest. And that sort of gets into the actual plot of the Thunderbolts movie and what's happening during the plot of the Captain America 4 movie. Like what is it that they're going to be doing that they can't call regular Captain America and regular Avengers for? Kevin Feige also explained during the panels that heading into the events of this movie, heading into Captain America 4, there is no actual Avengers team. Like, they currently do not exist. So there's sort of a power vacuum. Like, you can't just pick up the phone and call a bunch of the Avengers to rally on the spot. Even though in the Shang-Chi post credit scene, it does seem like some of them are still working together. Apparently, according to Kevin Feige, they are not officially an Avengers team. I did think it was funny during their panel that Sebastian Stan made the Suicide Squad joke like, join a squad of some kind. The Thunderbolts aren't exactly like Marvel Suicide Squad in the MCU. US Agent, for example, isn't in prison. Winter Soldier, Yelena Belova weren't in prison. Even though they'd done a lot of really shady stuff, they killed a lot of people, they were pardoned for that before this. The whole idea, though, I think is that Val was working for someone in the US government, like it was all meant to be above board, like the US government was doing really shady stuff having this team. And all the evidence that we've gotten so far just points to that being Thunderbolt Ross, like the person who's ordering her to do all this stuff. But given William Hurt passing away recently, what they might do is just say that the MCU version of the team is named the Thunderbolts in honor of him. 
And Val will probably just take all the plot you would normally expect them to give to Thunderbolt Ross in the movie, and they'll use them more like the Dark Avengers, like I said. The difference in the comics is that the Thunderbolts were created by Baron Zemo, and they were way more hardcore, way more Suicide Squad-like. The Dark Avengers were a team of anti-heroes and supervillains that Norman Osborn put together to replace the regular Avengers with ones he could control and use to push his own agenda within the US government when he positioned himself as the savior of the world at the end of the Secret Invasion arc. We just got the Secret Invasion trailer with Nick Fury finally coming back, this evil faction of Skrulls within the good Skrulls trying to take over the world. In the comics, Norman Osborn took all the credit for ending the threat of Secret Invasion and made the people of the world, the US government, believe that he was the real hero, using his new authority granted to him by the government to take over S.H.I.E.L.D. and hijack all the Avengers stuff. Like he also hijacks Iron Man's armory and uses his armor to rebrand himself as the Iron Patriot like I am the hero, everything I do is towards the good of America. And that started the Dark Reign arc like a bunch of really shady, really bad characters pushing their own agenda, but doing so with the full authority of the US government. And that's kind of what they're doing with Val in the MCU now on the Thunderbolts. Like everything they're doing is sanctioned by the US government, that's the twist. We can't be evil because the US government says that everything we're doing is okay. Sort of like a make the Avengers great again kind of meme. And the really shady stuff they're doing is probably related to what happens during Captain America 4 New World Order and what's going on with the villain of that movie. So this is where we tie in with all the Hulk characters. There's like a lot of Hulk stuff happening in Marvel Phase 5 coming up. If you didn't see the Captain America 4 panel, they announced some of the cast, some of the plot, like Carl Lumley's Isaiah Bradley is coming back. So hopefully we'll see some flashbacks with him when he was still acting as Captain America when he was younger during the Korean War. I know there's lots of theories that when Red Guardian was telling stories about his adventures fighting Captain America, he was secretly talking about fighting Isaiah Bradley Captain America. But looking at the timeline, just the way they explain Red Guardian's backstory in the MCU, I believe that Isaiah Bradley was arrested and thrown into prison before the MCU version of Red Guardian got the super soldier serum the Soviets had stolen slash reverse engineered from the United States. Side note too, you have to imagine that Red Guardian was created by Drakov inside the regular Russian or Soviet military because when they were doing all that, it was still the Soviet Union. You have all that going on through the regular Soviet military, but on the side, off secretly in Siberia, you have Hydra in their Winter Soldier program. So just to be clear, all the stuff that Hydra was doing with the Winter Soldier program was completely separate from what was going on with the Red Guardian program. But the main villain of Captain America 4 is the leader from the Incredible Hulk, the Samuel Stearns leader. Everybody's been wondering what's been going on with him this whole time. Marvel is part of cinema history and that I get to be a part of, of that uh, is an absolute honor. He'll probably come back as a much more comic book accurate looking version of the character. His whole thing in the movie is that he was trying to reverse engineer the powers of the Hulk, like he was collecting all these samples of the Hulk's blood. That's how he wound up creating the Abomination character, like he was a combination of the Super Soldier Serum through the Weapons Plus program and the leader reverse engineering the gamma experiments that the Hulk did on himself in his blood to give Abomination the gamma powers. So here's where we get around to the She-Hulk plot and the stuff that they're setting up with the Thunderbolts movie and what's going on with the Hulk in Marvel Phase 5. During She-Hulk, Hulk makes this big deal about burning all of her blood samples because somebody wants her blood because they want to reverse engineer her gamma powers. Later in the series, a mystery boss hires the Wrecking Crew villains to steal some of Jen's She-Hulk gamma blood. They haven't revealed who that is yet, but a lot of people think that it might be the leader because this whole thing in the Incredible Hulk movie was getting Hulk's blood. They confirmed the plot with Hulk going back to Sakaar was set up for the future movies, like there was a big Hulk plot that they would play out in the movies in Marvel Phase 5. Most of the evidence so far points to that being more of the Planet Hulk and World War Hulk plot from the comics that they just skipped over in the movies. And here's where we connect back with the Thunderbolts movie, because if you didn't read the comics, the first time the Thunderbolts team debuted, it was inside the Incredible Hulk comics, and one of their first missions was going after the Hulk. And they might be doing a version of that during the Thunderbolts movie, and that'd be another reason why Val couldn't call the Anthony Mackie Falcon version of Captain America. Because he's Hulk's friend, he wouldn't want to go after the Hulk. You'd have another Captain America Civil War situation. And even though William Hurt passed away, you have to imagine Thunderbolt Ross's whole thing is that he still wanted the powers of the Hulk. Like, all this time since the events of that movie, he still wanted to capture the Hulk. So even though you don't normally think of the Bruce Banner Hulk as a villain, if you think about him in a World War Hulk context, 
something could happen to him during the Captain America 4 movie that would drive him over the edge and put him in more of a World War Hulk state where the heroes and the villains, like in the Thunderbolts case, technically not villains, more like anti-heroes, all have to fight him, but the Thunderbolts are really just trying to capture him or kill him. So it really does seem like they're doing the plot of World War Hulk, but they're doing it inside the Captain America 4 movie and inside the Thunderbolts movie. The whole reason why they probably didn't talk about Abomination in Thunderbolts or Baron Zemo is probably just because it might spoil some of the plot during She-Hulk. Like there's still a bunch of Abomination plot that they have in the She-Hulk episodes. Like we see him in regular form. He's been trying to get a prison. He just did that. And now it seems like he's pretending to peddle this whole Zen New Age thing. Like he's completely balanced himself. He's totally chill now. But secretly, I think we all believe that that's a misdirect. And maybe at the end of that series, Val will also show up in a cameo scene to recruit him for the Thunderbolts or talk to him about the Thunderbolts. When it comes to the Red Hulk, though, because like that's what we've been talking about, like when are they finally going to do Red Hulk? And there's so much Hulk plot that's happening between Captain America 4 and the Thunderbolts movie. Because William Hurt passed away, if they don't plan on recasting the character, like doing some crazy multiverse twist, they could either do a version of the female Red Hulk from the comics and just give that plot to Val, or they could just make another character the Red Hulk. I'll do more videos about World War Hulk and Thunderbolts when we get more Easter eggs for them in the She-Hulk episodes. But if there's anything you spotted or anything that they announced for these movies at D23 that I didn't talk about in the video, just write it below in the comments and I'll try to address it. My full She-Hulk episode 5 video will post Thursday just like normal. I just did a Werewolf by Night trailer video. I'll put a link for that in the description. You can click here for my Marvel Secret Invasion trailer video and click here for my House of the Dragon episode 5 trailer video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.